So the next dissection is that of the fish. So this is a tilapia fish, the bony fish, which belongs to the class of stasis. So we can see it. We we'll start by describing usually the external parts. This is the terminal mouth. You see that the mouth is at the end. Terminal mouth. You see the eyes, and the eyes have no eyelids, but they only have a flower of tissue that closes and protects the eye. So they do not blink their eyelids like we do. They're always open as such. Then we have the operculum. This is the operculum this way, the operculum that closes or covers the gills. And then here we have the fins. This one is the dorsal fin. You see it with bony rays. This is the caudal fin or the tail fin. You see that when the fish is moving, it flashes from time to time and just to propel it. The new one is the anal fin. This one is right at the, the anal region. Then you have the pectoral and the pelvic fins. These ones are paired, so you can see them. These ones function in making the fish stable and also balancing the fish and also make preventing it from yawning. So in yawning, it's a situation where the fish can be moving in water like this and then it suddenly begins to turn like this. So that's yawning. So this dorsal fin and the anal fin, they prevent the fish from yawning, and then this one, they push the fish forward. So the pelvic and the pectoral fins, they help the fish to slow down in water when it is moving, and they also help it to increase the speed. So if you watch a fish, you will see that it moves and opens and closes these fins. So another aspect of this external vision is that the dorsal part of the fish is slightly darker. You can see it darker, but the ventral part is whitish. So this dark dorsal surface blends the fish when you are seeing it from above with the ground. And then this whitish surface blends it if you were under the water and seeing it up so that you will see it as if it's the sky and you will not easily see it so as to catch it. So this is a form of camouflage. It makes the fish to adapt itself into the water. So we can see the scales, the, the, cy the cyclot scales that cover the whole of the body of the fish. And you see that they are pointed backwards. So this fish is also slippery and it has the streamline shape. The streamline shape means that the head is small, the body is big gradually and gradually goes down so that it eases the movement of the fish without friction. For example, if I were the one to be moving inside water, there's the tendency that the water will be touching on my shoulders and it will push me backwards. That will give a lot of resistance and I will swim with difficulty. But the fish only goes very smoothly like that. So we can be asked to isolate, to take out a fin of a fish. So if we are to take out one fin of the fish, then what we'll do is that we'll cut off the operculum onto one side, cut it off like this, onto one side to expose the gills. These are the gills here. So these are the flaps of the gills. And then we can cut out one gill, we can cut out one gill, we can cut out the whole of it. Because you can be asked to dissect the fish to display the structures responsible for breeding or gaseous exchange. So, what we require to do is to cut out one of the gills, the gill filaments, like that. Cut it out. Then I'll put it. I'll put it on a white tile. Let me wash it. Put it on a white tile. So I I isolate one. Get more than one. I need just one. So I put it on a white tile. And then I observe it. So when I put it on the white tile now, what I observe is that I see that these are a kind of this is a gill. This is a gill filament. These are a kind of rays that you see. So you see that here there are some things up here which are like small teeth. If you touch them with a finger in a big fish, you will feel them. Those are what we call the gill records. You see them there like that. And then these ones are the gill filaments. So this one here in the middle, which is like what is holding the gill filaments together is what is called the gill arc. So the only parts you label on the gill are the gill filaments, which are these ones. And then you have the gill arc, which is this hardened structure that holds the gill filaments together. And then you have the gill records, which are inside here, they're harder. 
and they can even wound. If you put your hand inside the mouth of a fish and you go to the gills, they can even wound your finger. So those are the gill breakers. So if you were to draw the gill, this is just simply what you do. You remove it and place it on the board, on the white tile, and what you draw is simply to draw some like that. You try to make this side to look hardened. Then you make this one like this, many of them like this, and then you make this one. So these ones are the gill rakers. Then this one is the gill arc. And then these are the gill filaments. So this is just all about drawing of the gill if you were to display it. This is just all that you do. There's no other thing you do there. And that's just all. So we'll go now straight into the dissection proper the cereal proper of the fish and the very interesting thing is peeling. So peeling of the fish is done not like in mammal but it is similar to that of a bird but it is not exactly since the fish does not have wings. So we peel it starting from the mouth as such and then we come to the tail region. So we put a nail on the tail region as such pin. This is how it has to stand. This is how we pin it. And then we could also pin we also pin so open a little bit and then we pin the operculi. So I can use longer pins so they can easily pin it for me. to lie on the left and on the right. So I pin it like that. So this is all about the pinning. So after pinning it, what I do is that if I were to determine the sex of this fish when it was out, like this one, you cannot know whether this fish is female or male. But what is there to determine the sex externally is that you look at the cloacal end. That's the cloacal region, the, the region of the anus, and you count the openings that are there. If you see two openings, then you know that it is a male. Because the male will have two openings, that for sending out species and that for sending out grain and sperm. Then if it has three openings, then you know that that's a female. Well, the female will have another opening for sending out urine, another one for sending out eggs, and then another one for sending out feces. But you may not actually count them as a feces like this, but it will take time to count. Like for this one, this is there are three openings here. This one down here, this is another one, and this is the third one. You can see that this feces is coming out from this one, so this is the endos. You can see another thing coming out from this one, and then another one down here. So it means that this one has three openings, so this is certainly a female fish.